This is the Minis Forum AI370, and as the name suggests, it is powered by that Ryzen AI9 370HX. It's a chipset that has 12 cores, 24 threads, and the most powerful integrated graphics that you can find currently in an APU, the Radeon 890M. It's paired up with 32 gigabytes of RAM, which is at 75 100 mega transfer, so it's very fast, but you can't upgrade it. It's got two PCIe 4.0 slots, one of which has L SSD from Crucial, one terabyte, runs Windows 11 Pro, and it's even got two 2.5 gigabit LAN ports on it on the rear, and I'll be going over exactly what you can expect out of this unit here from Mini's Forum. Okay, so what's included? Visa mounting bracket, HDMI cable, power cable, the power supply, I like the fact that it's nice and small, 120 watts, so plenty of power for our Ryzen AI9. So the AI370 is very small, it is light, but it's an all plastic build. It feels a lot cheaper than their previous units that had alloy all around the outside and perhaps even a full metal build to them. It's like a painted plastic. Good for wireless antenna reception, sure, and of course it keeps it a little bit lighter than for moving it about. So we have our fan, the cooler right here. We've got two USB type A's. This is USB 3.2 Gen 2, Kensington lock slot, and 2.5 gigabit LAN ports. Two of those. Display port 2.0, HDMI 2.1, that's our power in. Ventilation, either side. Another two type A's, which are USB 3.2 Gen 2's, USB 4 and then 3.5 millimeter with headphone jack power with status LED and a reset there for the CMOS or our BIOS there. So what's missing? I would have liked to have seen an SD card slot, but I think what should be here would definitely be Oculink. I would have liked to have seen that and I think this really does need it. So we have four solid feet on the bottom. That's the bracket mounting point right there. Four screws to gain access to the internals. The fan is just there. Let's have a look at what's inside. First up, we've got our SSD cooler here. Now that is screwed into place, well, held into place on the four corners when you have the four screws in, but now I don't, so that lifts off. There is a little plug here for that tiny little fan, so you need to undo that, then we can move that to the side. And yes, they've got a thermal pad here, so it's got contact with this, and that's just a big passive heatsink. You can see straight away, L2 slots here, so they're using Crucial for the PCIe 4.0 slot here. That's the boot drive. This is one terabyte, and yes, it is a PCIe 4 spec drive here, but not the fastest I've seen, as you'll see later on with the benchmarks. So the RAM is not upgradable, it's soldered on, and that's at 75 mega transfers, 7500 mega transfers, that is. So it is quick. Wireless card is located just under here. It's Wi-Fi 6, so it should have really come with Wi-Fi 7 for future proofing, but easy enough to upgrade that if you wanted to do so. Really, there's nothing else to see. On the other side, we just have the fan, I'm not going to remove the cooler because I'm going to leave the factory paste job all intact so we get the thermals like it is out of the box. Now I'll show you the BIOS like I do with all my mini PC reviews and it's not fully unlocked to us and this is disappointing. So we cannot overclock the RAM, we cannot tweak the RAM timings, we can't set a even higher power limit. You're only able to adjust it here so they give us the three options of quiet balance and performance. So this is the power limit, but also gonna affect the fan profile. Now I've set it to performance, which should be 54 watts. We'll see what it can do. So this is a power limit that's less than the Beelink SER9. That one can go to 65 watts. It also does have a completely unlocked BIOS that allows overclocking, RAM tweaks, RAM overclocking too. We don't get that here, unfortunately. And this is our processor here. So the Ryzen AI9 HX370, very capable chip. And it's configured here currently to 54 watts. So we've got the 12 cores, 24 threads, 5.1 maximum turbo. Uh, what really interests me is its graphics capability because it's the Radeon 890M. So it has 16 cores versus the 12 we had previously with the 780M, which was the previous best version. So it's a bump up in performance and it's a welcome change here. Now Cinebench scores, you see that we're getting 2000 on the single core and 20,000 points multi. Very good performance and Windows, which is Windows 11 Pro, the version we do have, everything is very quick, very snappy. I'm not noticing any lag, no slowdown. 
Geekbench 6 score, very good. A little bit behind what I've seen that the B-Link Sir 9 is capable of when I overclocked it in a slightly higher power limit, which, okay, not fair to compare them. I got almost 3,000 points and around 15,000 for the multi-core score. So this is just a little off. Overall, not bad at all. Time Spy score, just almost 4,000 there. Graphics score, 3,564. Excellent for integrated graphics. That's a nice boost up over the previous model. And if we were to overclock, if they did actually let us do this minis for them, which they don't with this particular model, but like the Sur 9 that I had from B-Link, it let me overclock. And this is the kind of score that you can get if we could run the RAM at 80,000 uh, mega transfers. It would be this kind of quick. I tweaked the timing and I also upped the power limit to 65 watts. So you can see that does boost up the graphics quite a bit to give us 3,817 versus the 3,564. So that's kind of what we're missing out on just down to BIOS settings. For some reason, B-Link just doesn't want us going there. Maybe because they're worried people are going to Brick the BIOS, BIOS there and it won't boot. Finally, Fire Strike, a score of 9,000. Very respectable for this particular chipset. Really good performance for being integrated graphics. And again, yeah, it could be better if we had a higher power limit, if B-Link let us tweak it a little bit more, which is disappointing. And also disappointing is the internal storage. I mean, these are okay speeds, but it's, in my books at least, this is not PCIe 4.0 zero speeds this is very slow it's like pcie okay pcie 3.0 wasn't as fast with the reads but the writes are very very similar there so we're not gaining that much but it is a crucial drive it's a known brand it should be reliable which is the main thing there so our performance overall in windows is very good quick and snappy no lag that i've noticed with the 32 gigabytes of ram and we have adm amd drivers that you can update of course and Windows updates and everything needs to be run for performance. So, playback here of video, what's that like? So this is the first time I'm running it. Oh, and I don't have the proper codec for it. However, you can see it's running quite well. It does not seem to be choppy dropping frames. I find the playback with the Radeon 890M is better than Intel's Arc graphics. If you plan to do some video editing and it's 4K, it's light, and you're not having a lot of different layers and grading and whatnot, the performance, as I've shown before, since this newer generation of integrated GPUs is very good with Adobe Premiere Pro right here. So the timeline is fast, it's responsive, it's not laggy. I have even gone as far as to edit my camera comparisons, which is three 4K streams at the same time and no issues. Let's take a look at the export times now. One minute of footage at the YouTube preset that I test out. Now that one minute of footage at the YouTube 4K preset is finishing very quickly as you can see. Under hopefully 30 seconds and yes, that was about 27 seconds. So excellent performance with encoding 4K video. So can it game? You bet you with that Radeon 890M, the performance is a lot better and I'm running a test here of Tomb Raider. This is Shadow of the Tomb Raider. Set to 1080p on the high preset. We'll see how it runs and performs. The end result was 46 frames per second. For these high settings, that's not too bad. Of course, ideally, I would like to see 60 frames per second. Not quite there yet, not at least at 1080p with high settings. Next is Cyberpunk 2077. I have it set to 1080p on the low quick preset. And a very respectable 62.3 frames per second. Very good score for integrated graphics. Then what about an old title like GTA 5? You can see with my 1080p and high settings running really well, 125 frames per second. So that's really quick, great performance. And one of the highest frames per second, probably about the second that I've seen from integrated, integrated graphics. The highest would be that B-Link Sur 9, but of course overclocked with a higher power limit, which is a little bit unfair to compare them because this is running stock settings here. No RAM tweaking, no overclocking of the GPU or the CPU, but still very good performance. Then looking at our thermals, what do we get up to? Well, you can see 95 degrees. This is after the benchmarks, the gaming. Do remember I set it to the performance option. I defaulted as balanced, but I wanted to see 
the kind of performance we could squeeze out of this. It ended up using 62 watts here, the core power in total, but at the wall, I saw 89 watts, and idle, it tends to sit around seven, eight, nine watts, which is not bad. It's an inefficient chip, which is very good to see. But what about the fan noise then? It is louder than the other mini PC that I've covered, the Sur 9 with this exact same chipset. This one's a little bit more louder. When you're not doing anything demanding, it becomes quiet. But when you do have something running in the background that's using a little bit of that CPU, you're gonna hear the fan. So the sample now I'm giving you is worst case scenario when it's pushed really hard and you will hear it. Finally, some good news when it comes to Linux, you can run, for example, Linux Manjaro that I have here, open source drivers, it's the latest build and everything does seem to be working properly. I've got internet and the audio does seem to be working too. So that is great news if you plan to run Linux. So all up, it is still an okay mini PC, but the competition's better. That's now after me looking at the Sur 9, it has better fan noise, it's got better thermals, it also has a better build quality and a fully unlocked BIOS that allows us to tweak, to overclock, adjust RAM timings and even power limits to 65 watts to better the performance of what Mini's forum here has on offer. Now when it comes to my mini PC reviews, sadly they may be disappearing from the channel because really no one is watching them, there's not much interest at all in mini PCs. Maybe it's my video, maybe the style, maybe they're too long, I really do not know. But let me know in the comments, do you still want to see mini PC reviews from me? Or should I be dedicating my time to maybe more mobile phones, more camera comparisons, or more PC reviews or something, please let me know. Because it seems nowadays, people just really want product presentations that are 100% positive and leave you with no kind of buyer's remorse if you happen to have bought the product because you wouldn't watch it and go, oh, he just said it isn't the best mini PC. He said it's got bad fan noise or it's got bad thermals. Seems to be the trend, sadly. So if you want, let me know in the comments and thank you so much to the very few people that still watch my mini PC reviews. Hope to see you in the next one if there is another for mini PCs. I certainly hope so.